Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tic Tac Tyco. This week I'm dropping the first quick and dirty drill of the year. You're gonna work your dexterity, you're gonna work your timing, you're gonna work your sticking, and it only takes 10 seconds to learn. So come with me and I'll teach you how to skip the one. First things first, you're going to need a metronome for this drill. You don't need bocce, but I highly recommend them. Now I said it would take 10 seconds, so here we go. You're going to play an alternating straight beat, right, left, right, left, right, left. You're going to play either two, four, six, or eight notes, but you're not going to play the one, hence the name, skip the one. That was, that was less than 10 seconds, right? Yeah. Let me demonstrate using the four count pattern. Normally I would play right, left, right, left. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But for skip the one, I leave the one out. But notice that the sticking did not change. Regardless of whether I play the one or not, I'm still playing the other notes as if the one was there. There are three ways to use this drill, three versions if you will. The first version is to pick a tempo that's not too slow, that's not too fast, at maybe what I call cruising altitude, something that you can kind of play along and groove with, but it isn't too challenging. I set my metronome for 120 beats per minute, which is a pretty comfortable cruising tempo for me. One thing you can do if it's hard to start this is to play the one and then eventually take it away. The next version you can do is to push yourself at a tempo where it's difficult to hang. It's meant to challenge. This time I'll demonstrate with a six count pattern at a tempo of 115 beats per minute. That definitely wasn't the cleanest I can do, but the point is to challenge myself, to really feel like I'm trying to lock into that downbeat that's no longer being played. One thing that's really interesting, I know I can play a six count pattern way faster than 115 beats a minute. It's interesting that by taking something out of the pattern, I'm actually making it more difficult. I'm actually adding a variable into the pattern, which makes it more difficult to do than if I was just playing all six notes. And the last version of this drill you can do is to play with the sticking. Remember earlier I said you want to keep the sticking the way you would even if you were playing the one. For the two and the four, you can play with this. I wouldn't play with the six and the eight. Changing the sticking for those, it becomes a bit cumbersome and you start to lose the original intent of the drill. But for the two and the four, it can be a lot of fun. Normally, the two pattern for this drill would only be played with the left hand. One. One, 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 two, 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 one, two. Now, while there is some value to practicing that, it gets a little repetitive. So here is where you can start playing with the sticking. I have the metronome set to 150 beats per minute. This is kind of like a cruising tempo, like we did with the first version. I'm not going to demonstrate doing this version with a four count pattern. You can figure it out. Just remember, the focus is on making sure that the notes fit and lock into place more than which hand plays what note. That's secondary. This drill does three things for you. It helps you understand upbeats better, and that is never a bad thing. You can never get enough understanding of upbeats. It also helps you establish a default sticking. For example, if someone said, hey Adam, I want you to play this pattern. Without having to think, I would play right, left, 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 right, left, left, right. 
And if you asked me to do that five minutes from now or five years from now, it would be the same exact sticking because in my head, I have a mental template of the 16th notes and how they correspond to my right or left hand. So when a pattern goes on top of that, it tells me what notes to play. This is my default sticking. And it has come in handy for every song I've learned, every song I've written, and a lot of the solos that I do. It doesn't mean you'll use it 100% of the time, but having a default gives you a place to go from, gives you something to modify when you need it, and it is really, really useful. And the final thing is a concept I call space takes place. Most taiko players are fine when a pattern starts on a downbeat. The downbeat locks into that first note, and all the other patterns lock into that first note. But when a pattern doesn't start on a downbeat, it's a lot harder for some taiko players to lock in and, and those patterns aren't necessarily as solid. But with the idea of space taking place, you realize that whether or not you play a note, that note has taken the same amount of time. So when you have large amounts of space, you still have the same amount of place. This is also called mai or distance which is a concept that you find in a lot of things like martial arts as well as taiko. And that's the end of the first quick and dirty drill for 2022. If you liked it, there's a lot of ways to let me know. You can leave a comment, you can hit the like button, you can subscribe, or you can do all the things. So until next time, keep on practicing and be well. Mm -hmm.